Good morning and welcome to Christus Lutheran Church in Greenville, Wisconsin. Um, thank you for joining us for worship this morning. My name is Christine Lopnow. I'm the Director of Youth Ministry and along with Bruce Kessner this morning we will be leading you in worship. And Tim Calder on drums. Oh, and Tim Calder on drums too. <laughs> thank you. All right, a few announcements for me from me. You have heard me talking the last couple of weeks about turkeys, about turkeys for the Hortonville Food Pantry, and I'm very excited to say that you have donated 75 and a half turkeys um, for the food pantry. That is about $1,500 worth of turkey money. Um, so thank you so much for helping make someone's Thanksgiving wonderful. Next Sunday, we will be having the Advent Workshop that will be November 21st, a week before Advent begins, from 4 to 6 p.m. If you're interested in attending this workshop, you can email me, let me know, and um, later this afternoon or this evening, there will be a special email going out about that with some pictures of the projects that we will be doing. So come and join us and get ready um, for the true meaning of the holiday season, um, a time to reflect and wait for Jesus. And then the following Sunday, the first Sunday of Advent, November 28th, we are looking for people to help decorate the church for Christmas and get it all ready. So if you're interested in doing that, you can let Angie know, and we will be doing that immediately after the 9 a.m. in-person worship. Now I'd like to invite um, Jeff Arps, our church president, to come up and give you all uh, an announcement. Well, good morning, Christus family. Uh, good snowy morning. The bonus of online services, you don't have to go out in the snowy mess. So congratulations to you all. Hope you all home, warm, and nice and cozy. I uh, just want to take a few moments today, I'll be brief, to talk about a letter that you all should have received in the mail this past week. Um, the weather, weather, the, weather, the letter um, pertains to some giving issues that we are having. So I'm going to go through the letter. I'm not going to read it verbatim. Um, you guys have it. I'm going to be respectful of time, but I do want to hit some highlights of the letter. Uh, so a little history. Back in January of 2019, we were looking at our budget, and we were running into a shortfall, a shortfall of $20,000 for that budget year. We turned to the congregation. We asked congregation to uh, increase their giving by $5 a week. You all responded wonderfully. Um, not only did we overcome the $20,000 deficit, but we actually had a $5,000 surplus at the end of the year. So thank you very much for that. Um, you know, that's how Christus does. We, we get behind it, and, and we rallied, and, and we fixed it. So going into 2020, we were sitting really well. Um, everything was really good. And then the little thing called COVID-19 hit, and the wheels fell off, unfortunately. So... Uh, with COVID-19, there are many hardships, um, obviously for the individuals, for church as well. Uh, we saw many things go awry, and obviously the whole world just went upside down. So that leads us not to some great news for the church. So some facts about what happened with the church once COVID-19 hit. Uh, all forms of giving, electronic, envelope giving, loose giving, all decreased drastically, obviously with the number of people um, coming to service that would be expected. Uh, a couple of things that, that was really nice that happened is uh, the government offered some PPP loans. Uh, we did take advantage of those, and Adam Hansen, if you do see him, give him a big thanks. He dealt with all the paperwork and all that. So we were able to secure $80,000 worth of PPP loans that don't have to be repaid. So that was great. But even with that, going into October right now, we are short $14,000. What will be our shortfall for the um, for the next budget year. And our budget year actually ends in June of next year. We did an 18-month budget. So that's where it falls this time. So what does that mean? Um, we are going to ask the congregation to look at increasing your giving. Um, we are looking at the same type of increase, $5 per giving unit per week. With this, we can overcome it. Um, there's some important things, though. You know, it, Obviously, with COVID-19, we understand not all families and all giving units will be able to participate with that. It, it did hardships for all, and, and some will be able to give more. But as long as we start early, start now. You know, time is still our friend. It's not, we're not in emergency mode. We're not panicking. We, we have time, um, and we have the resources to do this. So as long as we all respond uh, what we can, and we start immediately, start it now, we can overcome it. You know, there's a great saying above our 
worship, or above our um, sanctuary here as you walk in. Blessed and inspired to give. Um, and that's who we are as Christians. You know, we've seen this before. We've responded. Um, so I ask for all of you, give as your hearts can, um, and we can get through this. We'll do it again. Um, we'll come out uh, good, but we do have to start now, um, and we ask everybody to look into it. So thank you for your time this morning. Uh, if you do have any questions, please feel free. I believe my email is on the church website. If it's not, contact the church office. They can get you in touch with me. Thank you, and have a great day. Thank you, Jeff. All right, one final announcement for me before we begin worship is that there will not be communion this morning as I am not able to preside over it. So without further ado, let us begin our worship. the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Have mercy on us, God. We confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbor. We have built walls instead of tables and have turned away the stranger. We have sought glory for ourselves and have treasured that which does not satisfy. Help us to love as you love, to welcome those you send, and to treasure mercy and justice. Turn us from our ways to your ways and free us to serve those in need. Amen. God, who makes all things new, forgives your sins for Jesus' sake, and remembers them no more. 
Lift up your hands and your hearts. Yours is the kingdom of God. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, your sovereign purpose brings salvation to birth. Give us faith to be steadfast amid the tumults of this world, trusting that your kingdom comes and your will is done through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We'll continue with the scripture readings. A reading from the 16th Psalm. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble, in which is all my delight. Those who choose another god multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me. I keep the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol or let your faithful ones see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. A reading from the 13th chapter of the Gospel of Mark. As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings? Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be? And what will be the signs that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. The gospel reading for today will be the last we will hear from the Gospel of Mark for quite a while. Next week is Christ the King Sunday, and then the Sunday after that, we will begin our new church year with the beginning of Advent. It is interesting that as we close out this church year, we end with these verses from Mark that are known as the Little Apocalypse. If you look up the meaning of apocalypse in the dictionary, you will find this definition a great disaster, a sudden and very bad event that causes much fear, loss, or destruction. We are only looking at the first eight verses of this little apocalypse in this chapter, but this chapter spans 37 verses and is also known as Jesus' longest speech in the Gospel of Mark. We are definitely ending our time in Mark's gospel this way with a big bang. But we also started our hearing of Mark's gospel in a big way too. With the baptism of Jesus, to Jesus' time in the wilderness, to Jesus calling his disciples, and then teaching his disciples over and over again what it means to follow him. Mark has shown us, Mark has taught us, that the journey of discipleship is a bumpy road, a road that leads us 
right to the cross. We begin this passage with the disciples in awe of the large buildings and large stones of the temple. This reminds me of a mission trip long ago when we were driving around Chicago, and one of the youth was just so amazed at the tall skyscrapers of downtown Chicago. He had never been out of the Fox Cities area. I imagine the disciples were ooing and eyeing in much the same way. Jesus replies to the disciples' words and actions of amazement by saying, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. And the first readers of Mark would be able to say, Oh yes, that did happen. The temple was destroyed. Perplexed by Jesus' statement regarding the temple, some of them ask him when this will happen. What will be the signs of this? Then Jesus responds with the remainder of our lesson for today. Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pains. Can you all see how this was called the little apocalypse of Mark? When you first look at it, it is a downer of a scripture. Not a lot of good news jumping out at you. There are many movies, shows, and books about the end times, about an apocalyptic event. Think of the Hunger Games, even the Lord of the Rings, or one of my favorite shows, The Walking Dead. There is also a lot of bad theological apocalyptic messages out there trying to give, convince the readers that the bad will get their punishment in the end and the rest of us will be fine. That is not what this passage is about. When March of 2020 hit, it hit us hard, and the world around us shut down. I am sure I am not alone in thinking, is this it? We, as a people, are in a much better spot to interpret this passage than ever before, as we are still living in the midst of this pandemic. This is actually a perfect time for us to interpret what this passage means to us, how we can interpret it in light of a pandemic, and how we can move forth and proclaim the message of this passage for what Jesus is saying to us through it. Who would have ever thought we would live through something like this? For months, it felt like the stones of our temple, our church, had been thrown down. Even though the brick and mortar of our building stood, there was a long time when no activity occurred in it. We could not enter it for the purposes we long took for granted. How could we be a people of God without our temple? our church building. But we were, weren't we, Christus? Without our temple, our worship of God continued. Something we deem as so essential to our church, worship, was transformed. We heeded the message of Jesus in this text. Beware that no one be led astray. We did this, Christus. Jesus urged his disciples to not give in to all the things that were coming their way, to not take part in them, and to stay faithful. And a lot came at us during this pandemic, too, my friends. It might not have been actual earthquakes or famines that we experienced, or entire kingdoms against kingdoms, but there was a whole lot of not loving your neighbor going around. And in the midst of tragedies, 
it is said that people like to place blame. And when you place blame, anger is bound to erupt. And I saw a lot of that. I saw a lot of people not loving one another based on skin color, based on whether they were on the red team or the blue team or any team, whether they should mask or not mask, and most recently regarding vaccines. And in the midst of this, Jesus is screaming, do not be led astray. Remember who you are as disciples of Christ. Remember what it means to love your neighbor, even if your neighbor and you disagree. Jesus is telling us in Mark, this stuff will happen, my friends. But remember who you are through all this and whose you are. I, by all means, am not a perfect follower of Christ. I mess up every single day. Okay, let's be honest, maybe every single hour of every single day. But I know my Lord and Savior loves me. I mentioned this once before, back in March, I believe, in a sermon, that I found it so hard that people were being so hateful to one another. And I could not fathom why people could not just agree to disagree. It was and is painful to watch people, God's people, be so mean. I love my husband to pieces, but Mike and I do not agree on some pretty big issues. But we offer each other respect and agree to disagree. I do not try to convince him of my side, and he does not try to convince me of his side. And guess what? We can live peacefully. I think that is a big message, a big takeaway that Jesus is saying in this passage. And Christus, another thing about this passage, truth be told, someone is always going through an apocalypse of their own, sadly. We hear bad news all around. We see our friends, families, and fellow Christus friends struggle with their own little apocalypses and wonder when enough will be enough. This month for my family marks a year of remission for Mike, a year where we can safely say there is no cancer right now. It is almost four years that the ugly year of 2018 reared its head and wrecked havoc in my family. Phew, our apocalypse is over. We should be smooth sailing here on out. Thank God. Well, the next thing I'm going to tell you, I share with you only because I feel so strongly that God is using me this morning to share an important message with you. And if I, can just sh sh if I can show just an ounce of God's amazing love for you as his children, I can be honest and open and share this story. Smooth sailing, I thought. Oh, boy. Was I too quick to think that. As something else happened in my small family a week ago, a new earthquake erupted. Our daughter, Emma, you, who many of you know, and many of you know, has not always had a smooth sailing kind of life. She walks to the beat of her own glorious drummer, and she has been the victim of bullying and other not-so-good stuff. Well, 10 days ago, Emma came to us and told us she felt worthless, and she did not want to live anymore. I wanted to scream at God and yell. Wasn't the cancer enough for our family? Now our Emma is struggling with these horrible feelings? Seriously, God, another thing, God. Another stone being thrown down around me. Don't you think my family has been through enough? I'm mad at you. 
I don't even want to talk to you. Now, one more thing for my sweet, sweet Emma to deal with. The words from today's passage, the words Jesus spoke, are scary. But there is good in this news. There is hope in this news. We can live through our own little apocalypses, and we can and will overcome them. Something bigger is going on here. God is not abandoning us. God never will abandon us. Just this week, I had someone ask how, me how I did it, how I did not crumble into a mess during Mike's cancer and more. And Christus, I'm shocked that I have not wound up a limp noodle of tears on the floor. It did not mean there are days I just cried or days I just laid in bed not wanting to get up for way too long. But my answer is God. He lifts me up. He lifts, he lets me cry on his shoulder. He keeps me strong. He sets my feet on solid ground. He gives me hope when all else fails. And this is who and what I can cling to right now with Emma. Little apocalypses will happen in all of our lives, and they will come in many different forms. God does not make these things happen. This is just the world we live in, the world where we need a savior. Jesus tells us that this tells us that today. That is why he will come again for us to rescue us from this world. But in the meantime, we have hope in him, the one who can raise us up, the one who carries us through all the little apocalypses in our lives. We can live and overcome the birth pangs of whatever apocalypse is going on in our lives. Do not be burdened by what can bring you down in this life, but let the one who knows and loves you the most help you carry on and kick those stones to the curb. You can and will get through whatever burden you bear with God by your side. So you too can live this life, this abundant life here on earth. This is the message Jesus gives us today, the message he gives you each and every second of your day. He will carry you through those birth pangs into a whole new world, a world where no apocalypse, big or small, can ever hold you down. He is there. Just reach out and hold on. It's an amazing ride. Amen. is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Oh, merit of my own acclaim, but only lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Away, he then is all my hope.
now give expression to our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll now continue with our offering and anthem. Thank you also to, for your continued support of Christus through your offering. Thank you, Helen. That was beautiful. We'll continue now with the prayers of the people. Let us pray. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. 
Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. God, our creator, you show us the path of life. Bless faithful people everywhere with humility as they extend compassion to those who have experienced harm in religious spaces. Cultivate healthy congregations that tell of and enact your reconciling love. God, our constant, you love our universe from beginning to end. As the seasons change, protect animals that migrate and hibernate. Bring them safely to a sheltered place and a more abundant season. God, our stronghold, you are present amid disaster. We pray for those affected by natural disasters. Come to the aid of all survivors of earthquakes, famines, floods, hurricanes, and wildfires, and the first responders who support them. Calm their fear, supply their need, and be the solid ground beneath their feet. God, our guide, you are greater than we can imagine. Surround congregations with your expansive inclusion. Be present in the midst of disagreements, differences, and questions. Unite people of diverse viewpoints in the love of Christ. God, our beginning and our end, your beloved people shine like the brightness of the sky. We lift up to you all who are going through their own little apocalypses. Lift them up out of the fallen stones and help them feel your incredible and amazing love for them. Today we lift up Glenn and Sandy, Warren, Beth, Lexi, Emma, Jen and Chad, Angie, Kevin and Sue, Al and Lindsay, Mandy, Al and Mary Kay, Anna, Karina, Vincent and Amy, Brianna, Dawn, Sandy and Bob, Helen and Kathy, Chris, Kristen, Joanne, Dolores, Trey, Audrey, Pete and Nancy, Ward and Beth, Phyllis and Chuck, Luis and his family, Verna, Trina, Walt, and Jack. Surround them with your healing and loving embrace. God, our hope and strength, we entrust to you all whom we pray. Remain with us always, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please join me in praying the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God, the beginning and the end, who has written your name in the book of life, bless and keep you in grace and peace from this time forth and forevermore. Amen.
saints before us go in peace to serve the lord thanks, thanks be, be to god, god. 